Hey everybody, in this video we are going to discuss downloading, installing Lightburn. Not only are we going to discuss how to get that onto your computer, we're also going to discuss the different options like for Windows and for Mac, and also connecting. Now some of these processes are a little bit more difficult so we'll veer off in a couple di directions and maybe even a couple different videos. But for this video, downloading, installing, making sure we have the correct drivers, and then connecting via USB um, just to get you started and communicating with the machine. So let's start here. And as you can see, uh, Brian Bell was so kind to uh, video record this for me because I don't have a PC. So I wanted to show you what it looks like on a PC. And then once we uh, get into communicating with the machine, then we'll go into my Mac and it's relatively the same. So the first thing you're going to do is download the trial. And of course, uh, you know, pick which computer you have. So Windows for Windows and Mac OS for, for Apple and so on. Download it just like you would any other app uh, application and then click on the link that's downloaded and then let it install. Go through all of these processes that you have, uh, the confirmations that you have from your system. I'm sure there's some security protocols and what have you to allow it to happen. So we're going to install Lightburn after clicking on the download. And once this is done, I'm going to pause it here. <clears throat> this is where we're going to install the driver. And this is very important. It's a crucial step. Do not miss it. We need to install the FTDI driver so that the computer can talk to our laser. So on Windows, this pops up. On, on Mac, it's a different story altogether. Uh, it either will download with it, or we actually have a link in our knowledge base for the latest, greatest FTDI driver for Macs that help it communicate via USB. So make sure we check this off so that that gets installed. Otherwise, you will not be able to communicate. Finish. And then once we finish, that means that Lightburn's installed, but it's going to pop up with the FTDI drivers now and install them right after. Just again, accept all of the protocols that allow it to install that and then make sure that it is ready to use. And after this, we can open Lightburn and get going and talking to the, uh, the laser itself. So we'll pick back up in the next clip. So now you have Lightburn installed, you have the drivers installed, and you're ready to start talking to the machine. Now, once you have Lightburn open, you will see a few different windows. And down in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see your laser window, and you'll also see it says disconnected. Now, you're, you're going to need your USB thumb drive that came with the machine. And we're going to go through how to load the, uh, the machine correctly. So we're going to go into devices. And what we want to do is we want to import. Click import and find your USB. And it should be labeled Thunder. Open this up a little bit. There you go. And you'll find in the file system of the USB, the bolt, the serial number, and also a USB or an Ethernet. Now, if you click on Ethernet and you want to install it that way, we're going to ask that you go through some of our documentation on the knowledge base. And I'll put a link in the description on the YouTube channel as well so that you can go right there. Uh, this will not get you set up automatically. You have to configure it to your network. Now, the USB, on the other hand, very, very simple. And that's what we're going to do this time. And click on the USB version and open. Now you can see here that it has my bolt here. It has the serial number and the USB. I'm going to click OK. Now, if you have multiple machines, then you can easily come down here and select which one you want to use. But we're, we're setting up the USB bolt. I'll click on that, and it's going to change it over. And now I'm getting a ready signal, which means that it is communicating to the machine. 
the whole point of the USB is it's setting some of our, um, our required parameters automatically. And if I go into my wrench and screwdriver menu option, you're gonna wanna confirm that these settings match the gold card that you received also with the machine. Make sure that they are enabled with the green check right there. We probably will have an included five second start delay. This will allow the fan to get up to speed to start sucking out the fumes and the smoke out of the machine. Uh, otherwise, the machine starts to engrave or starts to cut and uh, it takes about five to 10 seconds for it to get up to speed. So you may see some lingering um, smoke in there until uh, it does get up to speed. We're also going to disable the start button right here. So all of these things should be uh, part of our automatic load when we click on that USB option off of our thumb drive. I'm going to click OK. I'm actually going to go right back in there and I'm going to go to additional settings and I want to read from controller. This is only adjusting our preview speeds. Uh, so when you do a job, you want to do the preview so that you can see how long it's going to take. Well, this is going to make it more accurate. So if I read from controller, we might see some changes and there were a couple, nothing major but we want the most accurate representation of the job that we're trying to complete. Uh, so we can estimate it correctly or know how long it's going to be on the machine uh, so we can plan our workload. I'm gonna click OK. And now this is set up. The machine is ready to go, ready to build your first graphic and ready to send. We are going to be using send to the machine uh, when we send our projects over, um, and otherwise, uh, this is set up and ready to go. Let's say that when you go to search for your device, and uh, maybe the USB got lost or damaged or something like that, um, <clears throat> we are going to want to use a different option. We can do a manual create or if you're connecting via USB, we can use Find My Laser. Now this is if uh, things have gone awry and, and you don't have the ability to read it from the USB. We're going to click Find My Laser. Next, it's going to scan for the controller. And here you see it has found the Ruida controller, which is the controller that's in the bolt. And just about every single one of our machines, except for our Galvo lasers, we're going to add this device. And we can see the X and Y axis sizing. Those are correct. At this point, you can name it whatever you want. Thunderbolt USB. I can click OK. And then right, uh, sorry, rear left is our 00, zero origin. This is the origin of the laser. This is where it homes to and checks its end stops whenever it turns on. So we wanna make sure this is correct. Otherwise your graphics may be upside down. Homing features may not work right. We need to make sure that this is correct. And then we're done. Click finish. And now we have our Thunderbolt USB. Click okay. Now here's the, the, the main things that are loading on the USB that won't be loaded if you do find my laser are as follows. Let's click on Thunderbolt USB. And once it's there, it is connected, we are ready. But if I go to my wrench and screwdriver again, you can see that it does not have any of those settings that imported when I use the USB thumb drive. So in this case, we want to set up a start delay if you feel it's necessary. Anywhere from five to 10 seconds is fine. And just keep in mind that that means that the machine is going to move to its start position. It is going to stop and wait for five to 10 seconds, whatever you set it for, and then it will start the job. 
we definitely want to disable our start button. Our communications and everything are more solid, um, more, uh, more reliable when we use a start button. And now we have to add our scanning offsets. And this is off of that gold card. So once we click add, we can take the numbers off of the gold card. And one of them, the first one is 500 millimeters per second with a 0 0.025. Okay. And now we're going to add the second one. This is a thousand millimeters per second with a zero nine zero click. Okay. Now this is great and all, but they're not activated. They're not enabled. So make sure when you do enter these in, if you had to end up doing this manually, as opposed to loading off of the, the thumb drive, we're going to click enable scanning offsets. And this will be the same as running the USB um, import version. Uh, this is just done manually just in case uh, there is an issue loading it from the thumb drive. And that's it. The machine is ready to communicate. We have our ready. Um, we can go in again and go to our additional settings, read from controller. It may update some of these if it has not already loaded it. We are good. It did not do anything here. And this is set up. This is ready to go, ready to start cut, engrave, uh, it's ready for usage.